right, guys. So uh, we're going to show you a bit about how you can use your body in space, um, how you can physicalize your characters uh, in order to create that, that sense of difference between them, and also uh, some emotional impact you can make with your body, and also how you can create a sense of space. Now, I'm up against the green screen, obviously. Um, I wish I was in these woods. They're beautiful, aren't they? Um, but you don't necessarily have to worry about that. You could do this in your room. But I, you may notice something different, and that is that I am actually not sitting. I'm standing. Um, and I heartily recommend that you attempt this for yourself. What you want to do is get your, your uh, camera up so that it is more or less at eye level. Okay, what I did, and I'll, I'll, I'll insert a picture here. You can see that I put a, I have a table, and then I have a um, step stool on top of that. I stacked a few books until I got it more or less at eye level. And that gives me, and then I, I have space about three feet. I wish I had a little bit more, but if I go back too far, uh, my green screen doesn't work, and then what's the point? So, but you can give yourself more room if you want to. Uh, but I think three feet is probably enough to, to achieve what I want to achieve. Uh, and now I have all this room that I can work in. And we're going to talk about, okay, what does this do for me? And how can I um, make something wonderful happen in this little space? Okay, so the first thing we want to look at is... So, um, yeah, first thing we're going to talk about is your body shape, okay? And um, we talked about this last year in drama. We talked about how we can show different emotions with our body. Now, we were worried about everything from our heads all the way down to our feet. Uh, in this environment, you're probably only going to worry about yourself from more or less the waist up. This is right here. This is actually what we call a medium shot in, uh, in filmmaking. Um, and uh, this is pretty pretty much all you'll need for what we're doing now. Um, so what, we, what we'll worry about here then is what is going on with the chest, the shoulders, the neck and the head, okay? How are they being used? And also even the head position, how is it being tilted or that sort of thing? Okay, so um, let's, let's talk first about the, the spine, the chest. We talk about um, whether you are open or expanded or are you, collapsed. Now instantly when I open up my chest, throw my shoulders back, there's a sense of power here, a sense of pride. This would be great for kings or heroes, right? If you just stand in this position, you kind of want to go, dun, 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 I'm powerful. It gives you that sense, right? Um, it, it automatically you begin to feel that strength. So stronger characters, uh, you know, uh, whether they're male or female, uh, can use this this kind of straight back and even push your chest forward a bit, your shoulders maybe thrown back a bit. In the extreme, will give you that power. The chin up a little bit, almost looking down at folks, uh, creates that sense of haughtiness, right? So this could be an overly proud character, somebody who's a little stuck on themselves. Cinderella's sisters or her mother, for example, uh, you terribly, you annoy me terribly, right? Lovely. There you go. With just that change in your body, you start creating a character. Okay. I should say. Yes, and that Mr. Wu uh, was using that that term of the the person who's overly proud, who puffs up, uh, you know, and and the puffer fish. So that would be expanding extremely, right, to the point of just of just so full of themselves that they're going to explode. Um, Someone who's sort of average would, would probably, uh, but not, you know, uh, world weary or downtrodden, uh, a younger character would probably just have shoulders, uh, even chest, n neither expanded or collapsed, but just at, re at a relaxed position. And this could be a young character or an adult who's physically capable. Uh, and this will give you that sort of a sense. Then, of course, if we take it over and hunch, now we create a sense of either weariness or, uh, or age, right? I'm so old now, I'm full of, of collapsing from the weight of the world, right? Or perhaps uh, someone who's very timid or shy, a very, a very nervous character might take it down like this. Just that with my body sends that message and helps tell it, right? Okay, um, so what's uh, the next thing on our list is...
other thing to keep in mind with your character is how much energy do they expend just being themselves, right? And the amount of energy that a person expends usually correlates uh, on a, for, uh, with a couple of different things. How old or young they are, right? The older we get, the less random energy we tend to expend. I mean, just look at a two-year-old. They're going everywhere. They're just constantly moving. They can't stand still. Right. And so you could translate that with your character, a character who's young, one of the, the, the youngest of the goats or the littlest of the, the, the three bears could be a very kind of bouncy, active, very excitable little character. Right. Versus an adult who becomes more still. And, you know, someone who's very old or retired is going to be even more still and probably move very slowly in whatever they do. Uh, both their speaking and, and their movements will, it just takes a lot of energy and I don't have very much anymore. I used it all up when I was five, right? Okay, so sp talking fast, moving around a lot, very excitable. This also can show nervousness in any character. Uh, like, I don't know, uh, oh my gosh, mm, ha, ha, yeah, ha, right? That kind of energy being expended says a lot about the character. Right. Uh, using, I use my hands all the time, and it's, it's from my training as an actor. Uh, my family is also very expressive with their hands. Maybe yours is too. Um, but hands are wonderful. And uh, see, with me being farther away from the camera, with there being more of me, I have more space to use my hands. And so you saw me using my hands for characters. You saw uh, Amy in one of our previous videos was, oh, mommy, please, oh, please. She used her hands wonderfully. Um, you can use your hands as the narrator to talk about the lovely rolling hillside where things grew and it, it was gorgeous. You can do this kind of thing with, with your hands to help set that scene for us too as a narrator, right? Uh, things, you know, huff, I huff and I puff and I blow your house down, right? You can indicate action with your hands. Take that cow and sell it at market, right? Indicating something off stage, that sort of thing. So your hands can become very strong indicators. You could stare at the camera, or point at the camera, I should say, and lean in, you know, and, and get that hand to, uh, I'm gonna get you, that sort of thing. This kind of, of physicalization with your hands gives us something else to look at besides your face, besides your body, mm -hmm. incorporates another element to help tell the story. So consider how you could use your hands. Mm -hmm. Kid, come here. I am going to make such a deal for that cow. You are not going to believe what I can do for you. Such a deal you've never heard before. Right? This close proximity to the camera indicates an intimate secret. Right? Or, or you know, a little, a little intimidation even. Right? You better do what I say. I'm looking at you. Right? That moving in, is, it gives the same uh, feeling as an actor on stage coming down stage towards the audience, right? Um, you can use that when you're the giant. Lean in and look down. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman, right? And now this, do we get a sense of size even, of impact, right? Um, if you, as a, as a narrator, want to bring something in, make it more powerful, you could lean in. And say, but wait, he didn't know one thing, right? Uh, again, pulling your audience into you to tell them this thing, right? Is you using yourself in space. Uh, you could also use uh, this to create the sense of dialogue, right? Uh, you, one actor talks this way. So what do you think about that, pal? The other one. Well, you know, I'm not sure I like that. Really? What's going on? Right? We can, uh, with this ability to move, we can also, as we were seeing with some of uh, Trisha's work, we could play with uh, size, right? What do you think? What should I do? I don't know. I don't know what I do, right? Uh, I don't want to put too many words in your mouth. But here's a young character looking up, an older character looking down, right? So we can, we can get that sense of, of uh, height in space mm -hmm. as well.
Okay. Uh, what else do I have under movement in space? Something else you can do uh, with, you know, your movement in space is to actually help create a, the space around you uh, and help us see things is to do things like look off there. What is that? He saw in the distance, right? And the character could say, oh, looking in that window, uh, what do I see here? Or, ah, look off there. I see the castle or, you know, this kind of thing where your character can also be indicating things off, off stage or off screen, reacting to them. And you as an audience will paint, will fill in the picture. You'll, you'll fill in what they see by the reaction on their face, by the gesture of how, where it might be up or down, right? You're, you're helping create this, this uh, imaginary 3D landscape around your audience, okay? What else we got? Now, we've talked a lot about how you are moving in this space and, you know, some other things to talk about. You know, you can indicate like walking down the road by coming closer, right? You can trip, trap, trip, trap, tippity tap, tippity tap across the bridge, that sort of thing. You can create that sense of movement uh, here as well. Dancing at the ball with the prince, that sort of thing, right? You, you have that ability to use your space more than if you're just sitting in your office chair or squatting on your floor or on your bed. So that's why I'm strongly encouraging that you move your camera up to eye level and give yourself some space to actually tell the story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can also think about doing some other things with your camera itself, right? Uh, maybe trying moving your camera to a different position for effect. So I'm going to right now, I'm going to take my camera back a little bit. That's going to monkey with my green screen, but I could take this down here and tilt it way up. And now I'm a giant. Fee, fi, fo, fum. All right now we've got a great sense of height. Could use it that way. Or if the giant's looking down at Jack, oh, please, sir, don't eat me. All right. I wouldn't be very tasty, but I, I will hardly feel your belly. But my brother's a bit bigger than me, and I think he'd make a better meal for you. He's right behind me. You'll be here in a moment. Right? That sort of thing. Okay? Uh, you can tilt your, create crazy angles, if you like, that sort of uh, 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 alter our understanding. You could consider, if you wanted to, actually moving your camera during the scene to indicate falling or or, or shaking of things, that sort of thing. Be careful though, don't make a seasick. So, just some ideas for how to physicalize, how to put, how to give, how to take more advantage of this space. <clears throat> because we do wanna try and tell a complete story using all the elements at our disposal. We don't wanna be stuck just staring at a camera telling a story, that, that's just reading, and that's not very interesting. So we want to find ways to, even in our limited little box, to make the most of all the tools we have. Our face, uh, our voice, of course, our body. We're going to do some work in class with our faces. Mm -hmm. but, this, but think about, with this video, what can you do with your body? Reviewing, again, the shape of your body, how much space you take in the frame. What does that do? Okay, um, how you move within your three-dimensional space, references you make, where you look, things of things like height, right? Gesturing off stage to create that 3D space around you. All of these things that you can incorporate. Uh, perhaps adjusting the position of your camera to help tell your story, right? All these things that we talked about are things that you can consider and we actually expect you to incorporate into your storytelling. So you're gonna see a worksheet that goes along with what we just talked about. And what we want you to do is actually get down to brass tacks and decide 
what are you going to use for your physicalization, your movement in space? What techniques are you going to employ? Where are you going to use them? And start making those marks in your script to remind yourself and start doing that as you're rehearsing your scene. Really start to incorporate these things in. Okay? All right. I think that's well covered for today. So watch this video several times. Go over the things I've talked about. And then go to that worksheet and begin doing your brainstorming. So we see you next week. You've already begun to think through this process. We'll help you think some more, but please come to class with some ideas. All right, we'll see you soon.